In our last video, we covered mixed costs and the concept of the relevant range. In this video, we're going to answer the question, why should you care? Understanding cost behavior helps us to understand the risks that companies expose themselves to by having different types of costs. The best way to demonstrate this is to give a concrete example. Let's look at printing the Toronto Star. The Toronto Star is owned by Torstar Corporation. Torstar Corporation in 1992 built a printing plant located in Bonn, Ontario. The total cost of the plant, if that was our cost object, would be a mixed cost. Let's graph that. We already know that mixed costs end up having a level of fixed costs regardless of their level of activity. In this case, the level of activity is the number of newspapers that were printed. As long as those newspapers being printed were within the relevant range, the fixed costs would not change even if they printed zero. Torstar would also have a variable cost. The variable cost would be made up of things like the direct material and the direct labor that was consumed in the printing of the newspapers. If we printed no newspapers, there wouldn't be any direct material or direct labor. This, in that case, is equal to the total cost of running the printing plant in Bonn. What would happen if Torstar stopped printing any newspapers so that their level activity went down to zero? They would still have the fixed cost, but their variable cost would be down to zero. We know that even if they printed zero newspapers, they would have to pay those fixed costs. Fixed costs, therefore, increase the risk that a company will incur. Risk meaning the possibility that the company does not produce enough revenue to cover all of the costs, both variable and fixed. How can we see this? Assume that Torstar prints a thousand newspapers. The total cost of those newspapers would be both the variable portion and the fixed portion. But notice, if they produce zero newspapers, they still have to incur 100% of the fixed cost. That indicates that there is a risk involved in running this business. The risk is the possibility that the company's revenues, which they produce through the sale of newspapers, would not be enough in order to cover both the variable and the fixed cost. How could Torstar reduce their risk? They could do so by reducing their fixed costs or eliminating the fixed costs so that they only have variable costs. And that's exactly what Torstar did. In July of 2016, Torstar closed their printing press in Vaughan. They contracted out 100% of their printing operations to Transcontinental Printing, Canada's largest commercial printing company. What Torstar did was outsource the printing of the Toronto Star to an outside supplier of printing services. The move to close the plant affected 220 full-time and 65 part-time employees. That happened in July of 2016. What would their costs have looked like immediately after closing the plant? They would have had two graphs. For every newspaper printed, transcontinental printing would charge Torstar. But if there was zero newspaper printed, they would charge them nothing. Transcontinental was 100% a variable cost. As the number of printed newspapers increased, the cost would increase. But if there was a reduction in the number of newspapers printed, it would reduce the total variable cost. The level of activity would directly impact the total variable cost. But what about the closed printing plant? Regardless of the level of activity, the plant, even though it produced nothing, still had fixed costs. It doesn't look like Torstar actually changed their position at all because they still had fixed costs with the shuttered plant and they still had variable costs through transcontinental printing. Their level of risk had not changed. However, what would happen if Torstar sold their plant, which is just what they did in September of 2016? They signed a deal to sell the printing plant to an unidentified buyer for $54.25 million. After the sale, the cost of the printing plant went down to zero. In that case, after the sale of the printing plant, the only cost incurred for printing the Toronto Star was the variable cost. Tor Star Corporation had effectively reduced their risk. If their sales of printed newspapers went down to zero, they would pay zero. Previously, when they had fixed costs, they would have been stuck with continuing to pay those fixed costs regardless of the number of newspapers produced. Torstar had reduced their risk 
by converting a mixed cost into a pure variable cost. It reduced their risk because if there was a reduction in the number of newspapers printed and sold, the total cost to print those newspapers would also reduce. There is no further fixed cost which would be paid regardless of the level of activity. This also demonstrates a very important concept. Variable costs can be changed in the short term. Changes to fixed costs, however, is a long-term decision. Thank you so much for joining me and learning all about cost behavior patterns. See you in the next video.